Hello and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock on this Monday. I hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend and you had a chance to connect with loved ones, even if it was socially distant. And I hope you were able to get out and enjoy our glorious weather. Judging from all the people I saw outside during my run yesterday, I think many of you did. I have to admit, I haven't been running a lot lately and the run was hard for me. I kept telling myself one foot in front of the other and I'll get there. And then I thought that's what we're all doing right now. One foot in front of the other, one day at a time and we'll get through this. And what you're doing is working. Did you hear the national shout out we got from the White House coronavirus coordinator, Dr. Deborah Burks? It's worth playing again, let's listen. We continue to really applaud the work of California and Washington State and Oregon. We're learning from all three of those states, from their public health officials, about how they were able to keep the virus from ever becoming logarithmic. Not only that, this morning we got another mention in the New York Times about the success we're seeing in the West, flattening the curve. Yay for us, you're doing great for the greater good. But we're not out of the woods yet. We're still seeing new infections and deaths. So we need to keep doing this for a few more weeks. And there's word today the governors of the Western states are working together right now on a shared approach to reopening our state's economies eventually. So there's hope. Hang in there, stay home, stay safe, wear a mask when you're out. And thank you for joining us as we get through this one day at a time together. Now to today's developments. The number of COVID-19 deaths in nursing homes in Oregon is especially high. Newly released figures suggest nearly half of all the deaths in the state involve people in nursing homes or other long-term care facilities. KGW's Kylie Boshi looked at what's being done to help the state's most vulnerable. In Oregon, coronavirus cases have swept through nursing homes, putting the state's most vulnerable at risk. Health officials confirm nearly half or 24 of the state's 53 deaths from coronavirus were people in assisted living or long-term care facilities. The highest concentrations, according to the state, occurred at health care at Foster Creek in Portland, with at least nine deaths and 35 cases. There were also large numbers at Laurahurst Village in Portland and the Lebanon Veterans Home. We've never seen this kind of pandemic where people who are older and in places like nursing homes, assisted living, congregate housing, you know, where they are so disproportionately affected by this. I mean, it's really pretty dramatic when you look at the numbers. Alice Bonner, um, so an adjunct I, faculty member at Johns Hopkins School of Nursing, explained long term care facilities have become hotspots around the country because their residents live in close contact with one another and many already have underlying health issues. And it's more likely that people have multiple conditions if they are living in a nursing home or an assisted living. State health officials say they'll step in to help those facilities that have become hotspots with extra staffing, protective equipment and logistics. For example, Laurahurst Village is contracting with the state to use a separate building as an emergency care center to help isolate residents being treated for coronavirus. The union representing nursing home workers is asking for more testing and wants adequate paid time off so sick workers can stay home and avoid spreading the virus. These caregivers are already working long, stressful days, explained Melissa Unger of SEIU Local 503. I mean, lots of these folks go to work every day and make less than $30,000 a year. Um, that's most, most of these folks do. And so they're caring for the people who are most important in our lives and barely making enough money to put food on their table. The state hopes by releasing this data, it'll help to better monitor the virus at nursing homes around the state and prepare for any future hotspots. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. New tonight, Oregon Governor Kate Brown tells KGW she will unveil a framework tomorrow on how the state will begin to unwind restrictions related to COVID-19. She's asking leaders in business, health care and other areas to weigh in on her proposals. She says the first restrictions to be loosened could involve elective surgeries and procedures. The governor said a restriction will be loosened, then monitored for two weeks to make sure there's no virus rebound. Then they'll consider lifting more. Governor Brown said she is not adopting a federal proposal to wait two weeks without a COVID-19 death. Instead, she'll watch for a plateau or falling number of cases or hospitalizations. We expect to hear more details about her plan tomorrow.
And this comes after Oregon, Washington and California governors announced a new partnership to work together on a shared approach to coronavirus response. It's called the Western States Pact. In a joint statement, they said health outcomes and science are most important when making decisions on just how to reopen the economy. States will consult with each other before easing restrictions and will focus on getting a system in place for testing, tracing and isolating. New research shows social distancing in Oregon may have prevented as many as 18,000 positive cases across the state. That's according to the Institute for Disease Modeling in Washington. Researchers say Oregon's health care system would have likely become overwhelmed by late April without the stay at home order and limits on public gatherings. The team behind the report advises keeping restrictions in place through May. The Oregon Food Bank will get $8 million from the state to help meet increased demand. Because of the pandemic, the food bank is seeing not only more demand, but fewer donations too. Oregon expects to have most of that money refunded by FEMA because of the federal emergency declaration. We've been talking a lot about the problems and the struggles that come with this pandemic, but we're also working hard to bring you stories of solutions. And for that tonight, we head to Salem. They don't need to be in a hospital setting or ER setting. Let's keep you home and healthy and safe. What you're looking at is a brand new mobile health unit. Today, it made its first round of house calls to people who may have COVID-19, but are healthy enough to stay home. And by the way, this service is free. Maggie Vespa explains. Hello. Two weeks ago, this did not exist. We're not the ambulance, we're not 911. Oregon's capital city had its ambulance services, hospitals, and doctor's offices. People with respiratory symptoms had to just pick a lane and go. But crews with Salem Fire started talking. Most of those people needed to see a doctor, but they were stable enough to stay home. There's a gap in our healthcare system. And if hotspots like New York and Seattle were teaching us anything, it was that preserving space in hospitals and ERs saves lives. Uh, so I pitched back the idea of how about a mobile health uh, team that can a help. A mobile health the, team uh, that brings doctors uh, and nurse practitioners uh, to the patient. Okay. Salem Fire asked for help and it took off. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, is it six, seven? parties here. Monday, reps from Salem Fire, yeah. United Way, and Arches, which serves Salem's homeless, jumped on Zoom with healthcare providers to explain what they came up with. It's called the Alluvium Mobile Health Team. The ambulance was donated. The doctors and nurse practitioners are volunteering. Protective equipment here for staff and volunteers. And the nonprofits, along with the Salem Health Foundation, covered $35,000 in equipment and insurance. The service is free to anyone in Salem, including the city's homeless. If, if we do have clients um, of Arches who are hospitalized with COVID, then when they are discharged from the hospital, they'll be housed by the Arches project and Alluvium will provide the hospital follow-up care. The first shift started as soon as our Zoom call wrapped. We have the flexibility and the freedom to be able to think outside of the box and it really gets me excited being a part of something like this with such really, really special people. So Maggie Vespa, KGW News. The Alluvium team is not able to test people for COVID-19, but they will care for people who have tested positive. Maggie mentioned the doctors and nurses are volunteering. The group is looking for more help. We'll put a link to sign up at KGW.com. The IRS has started depositing stimulus checks into bank accounts. If you haven't received yours yet, the IRS plans to launch an online tool soon where you can check the status of your payment. If you filed taxes for 2018 or 2019 with direct deposit information or you receive Social Security or disability benefits, your payment will show up automatically in your bank account. You do not need to do anything. If not, we have more information on what you might need to do, depending on your situation, at KGW.com. Right now, a little self-care is more than a little important. We need to de-stress now more than ever, especially those working endless hours to care for others. And that's why a Portland man set out on a mission to create care packages for health care workers at three local hospitals. Brittany Falkers has the story. It started with a simple idea and a tweet. I was 
So surprised. Aaron Hansen just wanted to help his local health care workers, risking their lives to save others. So he asked Portland businesses if they could help make it happen. It was one of those things that, you know, you put, I put an idea out there and the kind of universe connected it and made it happen. That tweet turned into 150 care packages with more than 2,000 Portland food, beverage and self-care products being donated to our local health care heroes. The frontline workers know that they're not alone in this and that, you know, we're, we're supporting them and we're there for them and we're grateful for them. I think it was just the, the, the thing that I was hoping to achieve with this. Monday, he delivered the goodies with everything from nourishing body balm from Portland's Captain Coconut to tasty treats from Ground Up PDX. Loading up carts, first batch going to OHSU. Small businesses are a big part of what makes Portland so great. And right now, many are struggling. But that didn't stop them from stepping up to help when Hansen came calling. Yeah, the recurring theme over and over again was we're, you know, we're really hurting. We're on, you know, our business is on hold. Um, where the supply chain is being impacted. So we're not able to you know, produce at the volume that we want to. Um, but despite all that, we want to get involved and we want to we want to we want to find ways to help help our community. Aaron sees just how important some self-care is for our healthcare care workers in his own home. His wife is an RN in the emergency department at OHSU. You know, they come home and they're just so so, so tired and, and need, need something. And, and so knowing that they're not doing it alone. Brittany Folkers, KGW News. Thank you, Portland. Thank you, Portland. <laughs>